This is a really, really bizarre invention. This is cool. Oh, that's horrible. I might even get one of these for myself. Hello, today we're testing some more kitchen gadgets, part of an epic playlist here on the channel. So if you enjoy this, check out the rest of the playlist at the end of the video if you wish. And if all goes well today, we might end up with a bit of a quirky burger. As always, before commenting down below, please consider that some of these gadgets, despite being novelty, could sometimes help people with certain disadvantages in the kitchen. We're gonna start with this. This is one that's been sent in. This is called the Pot of Tea Tea Infuser. I seem to get a lot of tea infusers, but this one was very kindly sent to me, so we'll get this going. It was um, quite fun to see. And imagine it's gonna look a bit like having a daisy. Now, I don't think it's gonna look like that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> look at that. Okay, this is really fun. Ooh. So you take it by this, in it goes. Oh wow, look how massive that looks. <laughs> it's like doubled in size with it being underwater. And you can see it's starting to blend there a little bit. Agitate it a little bit, there we go, look at that. I could watch that all day. It looks to be staying smooth there. It's just a really cool thing to look at. All right, I've just given that a minute or two just to infuse flavor a bit more. So whilst we're doing that, this is by KitchenAid. Uh, it is the egg separator with a shell cracker. And I've had a few egg separators over the years. In fact, I've had quite a few. However, KitchenAid, a very, very well established and fairly high-end uh, KitchenAid mixers, stand mixers. I didn't realize they would do like something as simple as an egg separator. So uh, let's have a look at this. Yeah, part of me was like, oh, does it come with like a, a stand mixer attachment so you can add it on? So it's got, oh, that's quite dainty, isn't it? You could sell that on its own. That's like a little jug or something. Very cool. Uh, but this is obviously the, uh, the catcher thing that sits on there. And apparently this, oh, that does feel fairly sharp. That's one of the features. That is the edge that easily cracks shells. It's actually got a lifetime warranty. That's pretty cool. Uh, separates egg whites from the yolk. That's its job. Integrated eggshell cracker, which we've shown. Convenient pouring spout. Yeah, we saw that also just a minute ago. And includes measurements on there for if you want to get a certain amount of egg whites. It's in cup sizes, so you'd have to Google it maybe if you're in the UK like me. Sometimes get that with recipes, like, what's a cup? Ugh! Crack that in. There it is. Look at that. The egg white is still coming through. Well, that's pretty good. I guess we could kind of help it here. Oh, look at that. Look at that egg white. Ugh! Oh my gosh, I tilted it too much. That's amazing how the yolk has stayed intact and managed to fit through a gap like that. Let's just pour it through and see. Oh my gosh, the yolk has caught back on there. But let's quickly go back to that tea. And here it is as I bring it over. And I hope it's not just me, but I can't see a single leaf in there. That's been the downside to some of the novelty ones I've had before. Over the years, I'm starting to get like a slight tolerance of tea, I think, because of the, some of the tea tasting videos we did, like with Tom Scott and some of the tea infusers we've done. Like, it's absolutely okay. It's a bit bland, but that's quite strong. And that's what you guys have told me. Obviously, add milk and things, but the strength, the, the brewing, really does help me make it feel like it's not just polystyrene. But despite the novelty, this is still my favorite uh, tea infuser that I've had, the one with the plunger, where you've got like the cap here where you can put a tea bag or loose leaf in there. The mesh is really fine. The only downside to it is because these holes are slightly wider, that's where the leaves seep out. But like we found with that, maybe the plant pot is my friend. However, uh, one of my patrons is actually gonna end up, uh, as usual, there's a gadget giveaway, so they'll end up with uh, this one. Look after it, I actually really like it. <laughs> right, this one, and the reason why we've got the eggs, uh, this is Joseph Joseph Twist 2-in-1 Silicon Whisk. This is cool. So it is a flat whisk like this, or a little twist, a balloon whisk in one that obviously if you have it like that can store in a drawer really easily. And also like cleaning a whisk can be a nightmare sometimes. Apparently this thing can like completely fall apart. So let's not do that just yet. Let's see if it whisks, which it should. Okay, it can whisk. Oh no, I was gonna then suddenly switch it to this mode and break up the yolk, but it's decided to break down for me. So, well, I can kind of, well, we can do something else for the burger because I wanna see if these, on the actual packaging, it's got a picture of a frying pan, if these um, are safe for uh, oil and hot pans. If it melts, patron, whoever gets this, I'll, I'll get you another one. But it, I mean, it's, it, it stirs. <laughs> oh, actually, I do need the yolk to go in here anyway. That is gonna go with our burger, it'll make sense in a bit. 
Uh, apparently we go uh, flat again. Pull that out. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and it all separates for cleaning. That's actually really, really cool. And now it doesn't look like a whisk. It looks more like a game. I imagine it's just the opposite. So lining up the pips to make it build back together. And on this bit as well, line that up and then, yes. Oh, oh, no. Oh dear. Uh, little update, I've just spent the last 10 minutes trying to do this, it says to assemble, align the pips back up, so I've got them there nice and neat, the pip is perfectly there, it's all there lined up, we push it like this, and for some reason, <laughs> no! So in conclusion, that is an amazing gadget, <laughs> just don't take the end out ever, hopefully it's just this one. Blimey. The whisk doing that has just given the opportunity to nip to my gadget box and just get this out. I always wondered how I could use this utensil rest by Tomorrow's Kitchen in a video and this is perfect. It is a silicon tray like this. Oh no, I've just whisked up some eggs. I've got a dirty whisk. I've got nowhere to put it. I'm gonna rest it on there. Oh no, my spatula's got egg on it as well. Okay, oh, let me just put it down there because I'm so busy cooking the rest of my food. Do you know what? I would actually probably use that a lot. Like, I might even get one of these for myself. That's it. I don't want to get geeky about like whole cleaning stuff and keeping stuff tidy, but that is genuinely really, really helpful. In fact, you might remember this from a previous gadget video. This is still so useful for us. We love it. I think that was called the kitchen caddy, also from Joseph Joseph, which kind of makes up for the whisk. It's sometimes the most simplest things like that that are the most useful out of all these gadget videos. I'm like, yeah, I've generally used that. Uh, this, uh, in this white box here, is a metallic, I believe, uh, jar opener, which is adjustable. And I think, if I've got this right, yeah. That looks pretty barbaric, doesn't it? Name, bottle opener. Material, high quality stainless steel. Um, but that's it. Other than a couple of images on the top there, there are no instructions just like the tea infuser. We might need to have a bit of work with this. So I suppose we kind of get the jar, hold it like that, and oh, that's horrible. Like this bit here is really sharp and it smells so metallic. It smells like I'm smelling like a wallet. All right, so let's go for this. We've got some smoky tomato paste, which we might use on our burger actually. Um, there we go. So we lock that on and then, no, oh, it did it. It slipped and then all of a sudden bit it, okay. Well, that was probably the easiest because the gherkin jar is gonna need a bit more grip on it. I'm gonna slide that right up to it. And I think I need to like lock it this way. That time I didn't. And it feels like there's still a little bit of a gap. Can I pump it for, oh, there we go. Oh! I mean, it's no clear gherkin, is it? Can I put it back on? Yeah, okay, I think we've nailed it now. So you clamp it in. You push that lever in there, you push that, okay? And then... All right, it's barbaric looking, but it did the job. I was a bit worried at first, but once you get used to it, pushing that down, yeah. We've got one more gadget after this that I think is gonna be incredibly fun. Uh, but this is the burger press uh, for our burger we're gonna be making. I was in a shop the other day looking for some salt and pepper meals. Uh, stumbled upon these in the bargain bin. It did say five quid, but they were all a pound. Um, it looks like a burger press with uh, some sort of handle with the different measurements on the side where we could potentially make a quarter pounder. It sounds really cool. And actually on that note for the salt and pepper pots, if you've got an idea of how I can test, I've got some really, really expensive salt and pepper pots and some absolute budget ones. How can I test them? I just need some concepts. I don't know what to do. So if you've got any ideas, please let me know. But anyhow, uh, handy kitchen thing, burger press. Let's see if it makes a burger. It's got a built-in divot maker that prevents burgers from bubbling up. Because that was a hack. A lot of people like push their thumb in. That's actually really cool. But then is your quarter pounder becoming a nine-tenth quarter pounder? Hmm, debate. Do not use on a stovetop grill or in the microwave. Well, oh, the, the, the maker, not the, not the burger. <laughs> Place the meat down and then literally press it where it will just level out for you to the correct size. So you've either got to weigh it or just guess. Okay. All right, so I've got some mince there. So let's see. Oh gosh. Uh, no, no, I've just got to like sort of manipulate it back and forth and it's kind of finding its way. That's really, really weird. What's going on? It's trying to stay. Some of it's come away. Oh no. Oh, 
actually that's that's passable. That is actually it looks like a pineapple ring. Yeah, my only thoughts is that I maybe should have partially greased it. So I'm gonna put in a little bit of cheese. And I'm gonna call this my hidden gherkin burger. I've pushed that as close to the center as I can just to initially encapsulate it basically. And then I guess I can just pile more on top here. Yeah, and then literally, I mean, I should have probably weighed this out. We just push that down. Oh my gosh, did you hear that air gap then? And maybe rotate it a little bit, but I don't know if you can see, if I just push that there, it suddenly feels there. Oh, wow. That is a blooming good burger. Look, and it's still got that indent in there as well. Right, let's cook this up. What a burger. Nothing has escaped. Love this thing. So earlier we made an egg mixture, right? Oh no, a little bit seeping out, but I'm trying to get a little omelette patty. Because every burger needs an omelette. Did we just invent an omelette patty? I've never ever seen one. I'm sure there'll be someone that, yeah, they exist all the time. Where have you been? You live under a rock? Here we go then, uh, a very quirky burger brought to you solely by Kitchen Gadgets. This is the smoky paste we open the jar with. I'll sit that humdinger down there. <laughs> oh, that's almost perfect, look at that. It does look awesome. Right, remember there's hidden gherkin and cheese in this burger. Mmm, it's so hard to show, but the cheese is melted through. Mmm, mmm. If I ate that now, even look at it, I couldn't even tell you that there was egg in there. It's doing nothing. <laughs> but hey, we might as well use it as an extra ingredient. Well, I think that's my lunch. Anyhow, we have got one more gadget to try and it's breakfast related. So maybe I should have done this first. Look, <laughs> this thing's like stealing the show today. Last one, and I'm excited for this. This is called the Crunch Cup. Uh, it's basically a bottle with two chambers in it. And it's a little bit like those uh, bottles of uh, water that have got like the tube where you can put that in the freezer for a, a permanent ice block in it, where the rest of it is filled up with the water. So it's cereal on the go, no spoon, no bowl, no mess. And I am already thinking there is probably a video, will it crunch cup? Uh, <laughs> we could go crazy on this if it works. However, remember this isn't sponsored. They, like this actually happens. Some brands after I do these videos, they get in touch like, oh, could you refilm this uh, thing for you? And you know, we sponsor you. No, no. I want to stay impartial. If they're ever sponsored, I will let you know, okay? But I like the impartiality generally, you know what I mean? Uh, so yes, Crunch Cup. Uh, there's a person on the side there like casually leaning, uh, drinking their cereal and milk in one go. It's designed to keep the cereal from going soggy, but then you get the milky hit at the same time. Say goodbye to soggy cereal. The Crunch Cup keeps your cereal crunchy. Simply add cereal to the inner cup, milk into the outer cup, screw on the lid, and you're ready to crunch. I don't know if it's just me, but I actually like a little bit of sogginess in my cereal because it actually can infuse the milk, particularly with this cereal I'm gonna have. Actually, this will be the first time I've ever had this cereal where the milk is probably, well, just milk. Cocoa Pops, and don't get me started on how small the boxes are getting. Oh my goodness. And here it is again, look at that. And look, I know, let's not do that debate again, but this, this amount of air is not needed. It wasn't needed in the 80s, it wasn't needed in the 90s, it wasn't needed in the 2000s or the 10s. I mean, come on, look at that. It's, it's like 50% of the bag. Slogan on the box says, it's better than spooning. I disagree. There is nothing better when the milk, right, soaks the Cocoa Pops and you get a chocolate milk. That's the, that's the journey. Fairly self-explanatory. They've even done like a liner with a, uh, I don't want to get cereal with that much coloring in it because I would go hyper. So let's get the milk in, de -de 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 -de. just above that little indent here. And as excited as I am to try the Cocoa Pops, I am mulling over like gravy with like roast potatoes. Oh. Make sure that the inner cup lid and the outer cup lid is tight together. And we pour the cereal in. All right, that's quite a cool sight. It looks a bit like coffee beans. In that goes, ugh. This is a really, really bizarre invention. Do let me know down below what you would put in one of these, actually. I would love to hear the combinations you've got, and I will maybe do a follow-up. And then it literally says, tilt back, 
I feel like I need a dentist chair. So the cereal falls into your mouth while simultaneously dispersing milk. Oh, there's a tip. Control the flow of the milk by covering the milk spout with your lower lip or placing your finger over the breather hole opposite the milk spout. So that's that one there. It's a breather hole. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's, let's do this. So let, just to show you, I'm going to drink through there and the cereal should fall through, okay? Oh, I'm really late for work, Boston, okay? The Cocoa Pops just flew out. It was like I was trying to swallow some tablets. They were right there before the milk got there, but then the milk suddenly came at pace. I'm going to try and use this breather hole and see if that slows it down. Mmm. 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 Oh, that is so much better. I don't even know how that works. I'm actually quite impressed because you can get that tilt to make sure you get that cereal out before the milk joins the party. Mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. I personally don't know if that would be useful, but I can see how it possibly could be if you're in a major rush and it's kind of like almost like a, a show off thing. You're like, oh yeah, I've got my cereal. It's just like, okay, get up earlier. But to be fair, I thought that was going to be a lot lot worse. Now as fun as that was, it wasn't my favourite today. My actual favourite, because it's the most useful I felt, was this one here. I just, that is absolutely the most simplest useful thing ever. Like the tea infuser was fun, the burger press was surprisingly cool. Good luck to the patron that gets this on the next giveaway. Uh, if you've seen any cool gadgets, do let me know down below on your favourite social media platform of choice. Check out the rest of the playlist and I'll see you next time. Bye! Oh, do you know what would be really fun to put in that middle bit? Sherbet. Oh my god, just can you imagine? Oh, if you did like a really still, like a still lemonade, but then put sherbet in there and so you poured it together, I mean, it could go up your nose and look extremely dodgy.